Hi, my name is Katherine Lane, and I'm going to do a documentary analysis on the Freedom Riders. The Freedom Riders documentary was a documentary informing the viewers of all the trials and tribulations that individuals from Washington, D.C. and Nashville, Tennessee endured on their travels to New Orleans. The Freedom Riders were a collective group of people engaging in a protest crowd. A protest crowd can be defined as people who gather to protest political, social, or economic issues. While segregation was the issue at this time, segregation can fall into all three categories, being political, social, and economical. <clears throat> a protest crowd also bears the same definition as a social movement, being actively involved in the political, social, or economic issues. Social movements work outside the system by engaging various kinds of protests just like the Freedom Riders did. However, some social movements can become violent, but that was not the intentions of the Freedom Riders. A reform movement is a movement that seeks limited, though still significant, changes. It does not try to overthrow the government, but instead works on improving the existing one. That's exactly what the Freedom Riders did. They weren't there to cause trouble. They weren't there to cause violence. They were just trying to improve a broken system. From watching the Freedom Riders, you can tell by their behavior that they fall under the convergence theory founded by sociologists. The convergence theory is a behavior that reflects the beliefs and intentions that individuals already shared before they even joined the crowd. The individuals that make up the Freedom Riders found there to be a problem with the way that the world was ran, separating the colored and the whites. The goal of the Freedom Riders was to travel down south from Washington, D.C., to New Orleans, stopping at major cities along the way. These cities included Atlanta, Anniston, Birmingham, and Jackson, Mississippi, to challenge the segregation laws. The members wanting to challenge, were wanting to challenge how blacks were treated, and not only how blacks were treated, but how whites were treated if they were caught being nice to a colored individual. So these people are the ones who saw the problem and they wanted to fix it, so they've conducted this social movement and they've called themselves the Freedom Riders. The Freedom Riders expected some violence on their journey and the possibility of being arrested, but what they got was, way, was much more than what they had bargained for. The Freedom Riders did not want any violence to come about from their journey, and they specifically had chosen to not become violent with those that had became violent with them. The Freedom Riders set out on two buses from Washington, D.C., one being from Greyhound, and while the other one was from Trailways. What they encountered in each town was different than the other, yet similar nonetheless. It was not until they reached Anniston, Alabama, when they encountered their first round of severe violence. It had been broadcasted that people were to meet and greet the individuals they, when they entered town at the bus station. The individuals were surrounded at the bus station while the white residents slashed the tires of the buses. Fortunately, the bus was able to move forward, but not long before the bus could move, but it was not long before the bus could move no further where more angry white people greeted them outside of town. Those people who greeted the Freedom Riders broke out the windows of the buses and threw canisters that were set on fire into the bus trapping the individuals on the bus. The individuals could not get out of the bus until one of them ran into the door, busting it open for everybody to get out. The large group of people who had gathered to meet the Freedom Riders on the bus could be classified as being a riot. While not all riots end in violence, this riot most definitely did. This type of riot could be classified as a purpose, purposive riot which arise from the dissatisfaction regarding a particular issue and are, achieve, and are int intended to achieve a specific goal regarding the issue. Um, the individuals that were a part of the riot and they were so, um, were so dissatisfied that not only were um, colored individuals riding on the bus, but they were riding with white individuals and the white individuals and the colored individuals were trying to break the stigma of the segregation laws. They didn't want colored this, colored that, or white this, white that. They wanted to be all treated as equal. The riot had a goal. It wasn't a positive goal, but the goal nonetheless was 
to stop them and shut them down, scare them, beat them, harm them. Death was even a possibility if it came to that. They wanted to send a very clear message that their efforts were not wanted nor needed and that the segregation laws were how the world should be ran, with whites on one side and colored on the other. Once reaching Montgomery, Alabama, the authorities had to step in under federal order from the president. The states were incapable of handling the situation because it had escalated so quickly. And some cities just refused to help. Uh, for instance, one of the cities, um, FBI and the local law enforcement knew that the Freedom Riders were coming to town and they had given the KKK 15 minutes to do as they pleased with the individuals on the bus before they were willing to step in. President Kennedy did not get immediately involved in the Freedom Riders movement, even though he was aware of the physical challenges that the Freedom Riders were facing. He was aware that there was riots in the towns at the bus stops where the Freedom Riders were stopping. It wasn't until after the Aniston incident that he sent his assistant down to aid in assisting the Freedom Riders transport safely home. Uh, after the burning of the Greyhound bus, no one wanted to get on a bus and drive the Freedom Riders any further. There was no company that would take these individuals any further than what they had already made. They were forced to quit and get on an airplane and fly home. However, the Freedom Riders social movement had caught the attentions of thousands of individuals. These individuals felt as if what the first people of the Freedom Riders were fighting for was worth continue fighting for. It wasn't until the students from Nashville, Tennessee decided to walk away from school during their final exams to head down there where the Freedom Riders were stopped and pick up where they left off. Even though the Freedom Riders were not necessarily trying to recruit any additional forces for their journey, the dedication they showed to the cause caught the attentions of other individuals. Hence why those college students left Nashville, Tennessee, and went down to pick up where the Freedom Riders had left off. In order to recruit people, as well as keep their commitment, people have to understand what exactly the movement is fighting for and their level of commitment for the cause. The Freedom Riders gave all that they had. Someone was physically not willing to get on a bus and drive them any further. It's not like they just quit after being beat in Aniston. They literally had no one to help them move forward. Um, an example from the video was one of the bus drivers was like, I have a family. I'm, I'm, not, getting on, I'm not getting on this bus to assist you in your movement. People are not likely to join movements unless they feel that they can help or make a difference and are passionate about what the movement stands for. Um, for the Freedom Riders fighting against the segregation laws, this would really apply to any individual of color. Any individual of color should be passionate about wanting to have equal rights as the white person. Um, so I believe that's why those students from Nashville, Tennessee got in and went down south and aided in the movement. If movements don't have enough members to stand with them, the social movement simply cannot move forward. So had it not been for those students from Nashville, Tennessee, the social movement would have stopped right then and there when those individuals got on the bus with the assistant, assistance of the assistant of, for President Kennedy. Without the Freedom Riders movement, the start of the fight against segregation would not have began and eventually succeeded to where we no longer have white and colored sections and where everyone can be treated as equal and not one person's right is more important than the next person. In the video, it showed a picture of a little boy and it said, white individuals do not have to respect the rights that the colored individuals do have. Um, I believe we've came a very long way, even though we do have individuals who feel differently. Um, we were able to come forward and we no longer have to segregate 
colors over here and whites over here.